astrophysicist, we don't really care much about sea level. No. If you want to be high, you're measuring your distance from the center of the Earth. From the very center of the Earth. Is that different from the center? <laughs> I, I'm trying okay, to give it. Okay, the very center it, of the Earth. So you want to find the farthest point from that center. And it turns out sea level at the equator is farther away from the center of the Earth than sea level near the poles. And it has nothing to do with global warming and melting of the ice caps. Why is that? Because Earth, we know it spins once a day. Yes, thank you. Three people know the, how long a day last year. Good for row number two. <laughs> They're off to a great start. So, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. Yeah. It gets wider in the middle. And so Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. It's, an, it's oblate. And officially, it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby is a good word. It's like pear-shaped. Yeah. So <laughs> it turns out the pear-shapedness is bigger than the height of Mount Everest above sea level. How much higher is the tall mountain that you identify in this book, which name I forget, and probably you do too, in Peru, or is it Ecuador? Uh, Ecuador. Ecuador. How much higher, if you were on top of this mountain in Ecuador, how much higher than the Mount Everest would you be? There's a 20,000 foot mountain in Ecuador, which is right, Ecuador is like near the equator, hence Ecuador. Oh, uh, you're, you're, you're just not giving up. <laughs> and. Uh, that mountain is actually, the summit of that mountain is one and a third miles higher away from Earth's center than the summit of Mount Everest. Okay, question number but, two. But wait, wait, but you gotta know, let me just, so you understand. We've been fed a lie our entire, I wanna call it a lie. We've been fed. It's a point of view thing, I think. We've been fed a, we've been, Earth has been misrepresented to us by geologists. Because the globes that you buy, that you rub your fingers over, and you feel the Himalayas, and you feel the Rocky Mountains, no, <laughs> no, okay? These mountains are puny compared to the size of the Earth. You would not know they were there. If you were truly that size, some big cosmic giant lumbering through space, coming upon the Earth, rubbing your hand on it, the <laughs> depth of the, of the, of the, of the, of your, what do you call these things? The, um, the cuticle, your, your uh, finger. The, the finger, finger print prints mark, mark. The depth of that would be greater than the entire range of distance from the Marianas Trench in the bottom of the Pacific to the top of Mount Everest. Therefore, you would close your eyes, rub your finger, you would not know whether you are on ocean, valley, mountain, or hill. Well, you might be wet or dry. You might be, you know, well, by how much wet? A little. How? No. Yes. You, you wouldn't even notice it. You're not going to say, oh, I got to dry my hand. The depth yeah. of the ocean doesn't measure up to the depth of your fingerprint. Oh. That's my point. Oh. So, so we've been fed this misrepresentation of our own planet on the belief that, in fact, we have real surface features. But cosmically speaking, we're practically a perfect sphere. <laughs>